Jesus Christ. A blessed morning, a blessed day to everyone, to also to our fellow worshipers in other parts of the world. Since yesterday, we meditated on the message, the figure of the Good Shepherd. I would like to uh, focus today on the first reading, the experience of the early church of the power of the resurrection, the, the life of Christ in them, and the issues that they had to face. In the uh, narrative of the Acts of the Apostles, there is a strong, a, an apparent contrast. On the one hand, there is the joyful news that even pagans have accepted the word of God, the faith in Jesus Christ. On the other hand, there is also the accusation against Peter of having eaten with the uncircumcised men, meaning the pagans. It seems that Peter did not defend himself. Rather, Peter appears as someone who desired to bring his brethren who accused him to a deeper understanding of the motives of joy in order to share the gospel. First of all, Peter remembers that he was enlightened by a vision of heaven that obliged or pushed him to open his eyes of what was happening. Thus he referred to this vision of three men with whom, motivated by the Spirit, he was carried or inspired to ascertain how even among the pagans that there was the desire of salvation in Christ. Finally he speaks out speaks about a small, a kind of a, a sort of Pentecost that happened in the house of Cornelius and affirmed that the Holy Spirit has descended over the pagans exactly as it happened at the beginning that happened to the apostles during Pentecost. All this led many to be surprised and confirm Peter in the certainty of their openness, the openness of the gospel to these pagans. Thus Peter performed here his role as a shepherd leading the first Christians in the path of faith. One important lesson we can learn from this event is to be always op be open to God, to His Word, especially to the Holy Spirit. The church, or we as persons, as individuals, and the church in particular, will always be confronted with new situations. Many times, we rely on tradition, yung nakasanayan, on what is usual in, and familiar. While it is important to be respectful of tradition because it provides stability and order in our lives, but it is also true that tradition and the accustomed way of doing things, its schema, cannot totally account for and respond to new situations, new experiences. As they would, in the gospel would say, new wine 
in a new wine skin. The experience, for example, of this pandemic or Christian life in this modern world. There are issues and questions that cannot be adequately answered by the old schema. For example, during this pandemic, one frontliner asked me, Father, sabi niya, may narinig ako na nagsasabi na yung blessing daw ng pare doon sa la, ano, live streaming mas ay effective lang kung sa moment na yan. But beyond that, hindi na daw. Eh, papaano ako? I work for 24 hours, for example. Lalong-lalo na nung una. No? Eh, gusto ko mag, magsimba at mag, mag-attend doon. Ibig sabihin ba, wala nang visa yung bas-bas doon? Kasi hindi ako present doon mag-live stream. Sabi ko, well, who knows? The will of, I mean, the mind of God. I mean, this is in a situation like live streaming that we we do and participating in this live stream mass. Of course, this is not ideal. Why? Because we cannot receive the Lord in Holy Communion. But in such situation, the most important thing, I think, is to be nourished spiritually. Maybe not the most ideal form but there is the possibility of being nourished maybe not the holy communion but the word that is proclaimed so the theological root of the live stream mass is not the spiritual communion that we do but is part of course no but the word proclaimed, whether here in the community, in the church, or beyond, no? there is the por- force of the word of God no? that goes beyond the physical presence. And there is the, that should be emphasized, no? the word that is proclaimed. Another uh, controversy that happened, for example, during the, uh, how do you call this, uh, linggo ng palaspas. No? Father, kulang yata yung basbas, yung, kasi hindi nawisikan yung aking palaspas. Sinabi na ng mga obispo at ganun din yung pananaw ng pagbabasbas. Na hindi yung wisik-wisik, that is part that is symbol symbol of that blessing but the blessing comes from the word or meaning the the word proclaimed and the prayer that is uttered for these elements so if we operate within the usual scheme of things eh, mahirap baka magkakaroon pa tayo ng mga controversy dyan. But precisely this is where the Lord is leading us to be discerning, to be especially for that which would help people grow, just like in the first reading today. No? The Holy Spirit led them to accept and uh, because the spirit indeed was operative even among the pagans dear friends there are situations in life as individuals as church and we need always to be open discerning critical and always think of what is good and what is 
the best for others and for our lives. May the spirit of the risen Christ be our inspiration always and to guide us in our journey. Amen.